Welcome to Div Tech 101, aka Black Mentors. We discuss information technology, also known as IT. In today's episode, I am going to just go over some basic internal home networking devices that you can use for your wireless network. <music> So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So one of the first things that I want to look at that we have on the list is the Motorola surfboard modem. And this is the SB6141 that we have here in front of us. As you can see, it has our indication buttons on the front or not buttons, but actually indicator lights. Uh, we have a power light, of course, up here at the top. We have our download, upload, and then this is your internet connectivity button. It's normally blue uh, to let you know that it's online. If that's actually blinking orange or another color, you definitely want to call your provider. And this right here down at the bottom is our kind of like our performance indicator here to let us know that it is working, and you'll see that uh, blinking as well. Now, another one that I also have uh, as well is the SB8200. And this one I have bought um, the second time around. I normally used to buy my own modems and then just have them just to run the service uh, to my residents. Um, but here lately, I've just kind of been going with uh, the, the ISP provided modem slash router um, combined uh, just for simplicity's sake because I was messing around with a lot of unified devices and it kind of gets a little bit difficult, uh, a little bit challenging once you have your own equipment versus using theirs. Now on this particular one here for the SB8200, if you notice it has two RJ45 ports on it versus the first one that I showed you here. The reason why is so that when you have your router, your wireless router, say if you wanted to run your own equipment, you have your wireless router, like I have my um, EA6400, I did this on a demo the other day uh, for, for you all, so that's uh, this right here. And if you notice on the back of this, we have what we ca have called, what we call that, that uh, Ethernet uh, port on the back of here. Now, all these Ethernet ports, we have four that are there, and then the one that's in yellow, which is this one right here, this particular port is what you're gonna use to connect to your, um, modems if you are gonna be using your own equipment. So this is the catch. Your ISP has their own modem slash router combined into one device for simplicity's sake for residential customers, or you can go out and buy your modem separately by itself and buy your router that you want separately by yourself, depending on how you wanna do your network. Now, if you like simplicity, ease of control, you may wanna go with the ISP provided. If you're deeply technical like myself and you want to play around with different settings, you want to control your own uh, network as well, and you just only want them to run service, then you will buy a separate router. Then you will also buy your separate modem as well. And you definitely have to look on the website for the service provider to know which one that you're going to be using. Now, of course, with everything uh, is kind of... Um, Easy peasy, but you have your, of course, your power cable. And then here you have a reset button if you need to reset uh, a particular router uh, that you have. You just take a paper clip, put it in there, hold it for a few seconds. I think most of the time up to 10 seconds that'll work. This even internet port right here is where your, this will come from your modem, which could be your number one here or if you got one that has a single RJ45 port or one that has two, you're going to go with one, okay? So let me set this aside for a second so I won't confuse anyone. So this right here is our own modem that we have. So our internet line comes through coax that comes from outside, comes to the side of your residence or your apartment or whatever. Then it runs to a port somewhere within your home or apartment and you twist the coax cable onto here. And then you take your Ethernet cable. And your Ethernet cable is going to be 
one that you purchase from the store. You can get them from your ISP as well. And this is very important, people. If you want the fastest connection, at the time of this video, you can have almost up to a gig. You want something that's going to support Cat 5V or Cat 6. Cat 5V goes up to um, a gig, and then also uh, Cat 6 is definitely a gig and all that. So once you have the coax running here, and it's down and in there secure, you then you then take your Ethernet cable, you will plug that into your device, and then you will go to your router, and on your router, no matter which one you're using, you may have a different color-coded port for your either for your internet side. You take the Ethernet cable and you plug it in, and then at that point you will configure your wireless router. This is how all your cell phones and your tablets, your fire sticks, all of them connect to your specific router, wireless router that you have. This is what sends out the signal for other devices to connect. Okay? So you would definitely want to configure this the way that you want it, setting the name you want. Like you don't want the standard Wi-Fi name. Okay? Now, should you have one that have dual Ethernet ports, you may have one that looks like this. Same thing applies. Power, twist your coax onto here, and make sure you have your ISP provides you service so that you can get to this. And then what you do from there is you just plug it in number one, and then you take the same thing and then you plug it the other end up into the internet port on the back of your router. And all of this would be plugged up somewhere in your closet, nice and neat. Now, a lot of times when you look on the bottom of your wireless router, you will have your wireless uh, username Wi-Fi name, password, all that will be there. So you can use that to connect as well. And that right there, people, is all you will need in order to get your connection uh, set up there. And so um, I just, just brought multiple pieces in so that you can see them side by side and everything. But that's pretty much like um, how it works. Um, it's not really anything hard at all. Now, what I will say is this. So if you live in the South Memphis, Tennessee area, we mostly have Comcast and Xfinity here and AT&T as well. And depending on where you have your devices, some people just like wireless and it's perfectly fine. You can have wireless. You just basically get their supply device and it has both of these uh, devices here. The ISP, internet service provider, provided equipment takes the router and the modem and it combines it into one simple device. And that device you can put anywhere within your residence to get a connection. Now, outside of that, if you want to go a little bit more into detail, start throwing in extra components into your network and throwing access points up, then that's where you will get a small switch. You would get your own modem. Then you would have your router. And modem is just short for modulation, demodulation. It just breaks down the signal that your service provider brings in. So this device is what converts your signal over from the coax cable that's going through your yard, and it goes into this device, and this device converts it over um, so that way that your internal network will be able to actually get the necessary connections. And you just make sure that your service provider, when you buy this, make sure that they have this registered under your account. If not, it will not work. When you, if you buy your own modem, make sure your ISP has the um, MAC address and the numbers for your own personal modem. Don't just hook this up because it will not work. Once you get them to get service to your residence, then you configure this all by yourself. Now, they will not help you with this if this breaks. The only other downfall, too, is when these become outdated, you may see a degradation in your service. So then, therefore, you can make the decision to move your wireless router out of the way and move your modem out of the way, and then you can proceed to getting your own specific um um, thing or your device with the service provider so that way they're able to have 100% control over that device and you can restart it from the mobile app on your phone and you can go from there. So people, like, listen, and subscribe. DivTech 101, aka Black Mantle. Look forward to bringing more content to you soon.